Hi folks, so you might have seen a video or a photo of uh, Stefan Kung, a Swiss rider at European Time Trial Championships, finishing the race with his helmet caved in, blood all over his face and chest. I saw a lot of comments from folks saying like, man, what a warrior, what a badass. And I just had to push back on that. I did an Instagram post about it and I thought I would expand on it here. So I've been riding a long time. I've crashed plenty. Uh, I'm no longer afraid of road rash or broken bones. What really scares me is a concussion uh, that comes back to bite me. I love competition. I love the whole suffering thing, but I do think that in cycling, the, the fetishization of suffering, as I call it, can go a little too far, and head injuries would be that line. There's nothing admirable or cool about uh, continuing on when you're obviously concussed. Obviously, this isn't Kunk's fault. This is a failure of the UCI or his team in this incident. I don't even want to get into the, the finger pointing and the blame game. Uh, what I want to do is kind of educate and share what I know and what I think you should know. And Dr. Kevin Sprouse, a former team doctor and current doctor for EF, has graciously offered his time to answer my questions here. We're talking about how to know if you're concussed, what the UCI is doing, and what you could do if you think you might be concussed on a ride, what you can check on yourself, what to watch out for, and how to come back from it. Our sponsor again for this episode is Beam Dream. One of the best ways to recover from a concussion or anything for that matter physical is good sleep. Beam Dream is like a hot chocolate kind of powder. Mix it in with some milk or water before bed. If you use Phil Sent Me, you save 15% and they'll throw in a free frother. If you subscribe, you save 20%. So that could be a total of 35% off if you do it right. With Beam Dream, I find I sleep a little bit longer, but I've got the, the sleep tracker. I have a higher quality sleep. Uh, I hit the coffee less in the morning, wake up a little more refreshed. They got a bunch of fun flavors. Check out the link in the description, give it a try. So it was the Kung situation that made me want to do this video, uh, but I think a better example of uh, in-race concussions is my friend Tom Squinch from the Tour of California in 2017. This video is kind of hard to watch, but I think it's important. So he crashes, and his instinct is to get back on the bike. He obviously hit his head. He's falling over. Uh, the, the neutral support guy, you know, his job is to get Tom's back on the bike. He's not paying attention to the fact that Tom's looks drunk, uh, definitely shouldn't be riding. You can see he's he's just walking into the pack. He's almost, he's causing a danger to himself, obviously. He's a danger to other riders. Um, here, the guy just gets him back on the bike. And this is just, we've learned a lot since then. Ultimately, he was pulled from this pretty quickly. Um, but watch him start riding. And, and this is what happens when you when you ride your bike and cuss. This is, this is, this could have been so much worse. So Dr. Sprouse, what is the concussion protocol for a pro team uh, at a race? The concussion protocol is actually fairly new. The UCI has mm -hmm. adopted one, um, gosh, in the last couple of years. Maybe last year was the first year. Uh, and it's, it's really one that aims to slow things down and allow anyone on the side of the road to assess a situation, evaluate someone who has crashed, and see whether they think there's a high likelihood of concussion, recognizing that not everyone who's going to come to the aid of a rider is a physician or formally trained. Right. The neutral support guy is helping Tom's get on his bike. And it's like, it, he looks insane, but like, no, he's just flummoxed and just raced down a mountain himself. <laughs> well, can you uh, imagine being in that position, having no medical training and probably knowing that there's something not quite right? But you're sure as hell not going to hold someone out of a race. And I right. totally understand that. Right. Um, you put in a really bad position. So the UCI's policy has really been put together to address that, mm -hmm. to, to empower folks to say, if you think there's something wrong, you can take them off the field of play or off the road. Um, th there's more beyond that on how to treat it, how to come back to, um, back to training and competition. Right. But that's all. It's really good stuff, but in the moment, what we're worried about is who can assess them, who has the right to remove them. It's impossible yeah. to keep an eye on every rider at once. Uh, the people yeah. crash like off camera. Well, I mean, you mentioned this situation with Tom's. Um, I was the head doctor at the time, was not at the race. We actually did not have a doctor at that race uh, mm -hmm. for, there was always, you know, for whatever reason, budgetary reasons, sure. not required. You know, we go to a lot of races, but we can't cover everything. Right. Um, and so, I saw it eventually on TV, actually a replay during the race. I was alerted to the fact that it had happened. Yeah. Um, and we're trying to call the car and get the director on the line. And it's, it's messy. If yeah. you look at something like soccer or American football, it's pretty clean. You, you take the athlete out, you have them sit for a minute, kind of assess them. Yeah, you can all see it. Back in. Um, so it's, cycling is a uniquely difficult sport to implement any kind of concussion protocol. Right. And if you take him out for two minutes, he's probably not going to catch back on. <laughs> like you've essentially he's taken done. him out permanently. You can't yeah. pause the, the play. 
what about uh, what about average people? What about normal folks who crash on their ride? How do they know if they're concussed or not? What's a good way to tell? So it's good to lean on the people around you. And, and mm-hmm. I can say this because I a few years ago, I hit a dog, went over the dog, landed on the back of my head. Um, the guy I was with was like, I, are you sure you're okay? I was like, I'm fine, I'm fine. I rode home, went to work. Only a few hours later did I realize, I was like, I shouldn't be here. Right. Um, so I tell that story to say it's really hard in the moment to understand if you have a concussion or not. If you've been knocked out, that's one thing. If you're really nauseated, can't see straight, if you have severe symptoms, it can be fairly evident. Uh, but a lot of times the, the symptoms are, are milder. And as athletes, we're kind of conditioned to say, oh, no, it's fine. You know, it's, right. it's not a visible injury per se. Uh, if you have a collarbone sticking out, you know, like, this is a problem. <laughs> right. Uh, but with Brains the concussion, it's, yeah, it, it's a functional uh, problem with the brain, not a structural one. And so even on a scan, you can't see it. So you really have to lean on those around you uh, to, to tell you if you're acting off in the absence of loss of consciousness, um, you know, uh, difficulty with balance, difficulty with nausea, memory, like some things that'll jump out at you. The big takeaway for, for us normal people, it's a, it's a realization that the risk is bigger than the benefit of continuing. So if there's any concern, Call it a day, pull the plug, right. go home, see how it progresses. If you lose consciousness, if you're dizzy, if you're nauseous, uh, call your, your, your wife, husband, call an Uber. Um, yeah. Deal with, your, yeah, deal with it later. And okay. see, you know, if you've lost consciousness and you're experiencing some of those things, seek medical care. Like it's, it's important sometimes to have a scan and make sure there's nothing more than a concussion, no bleeding or skull fracture. Right. If it's, if it's much milder than that, you just feel a little bit off and, and there's nothing glaring that seems terrible, just call it a day. Your, your, your training's not out the window. Your fitness is going to be fine. <laughs> You're gonna, you stand to do much more damage to your long-term uh, fitness and goals by continuing than yeah. just by calling it a day. What about if you, if you are concussed? Um, I think that protocol's changed. There was, I, at some point it was, you're not supposed to go to sleep. Um, what do you do if you know someone's concussed? What do you tell that rider? Yeah. So the sleep thing is interesting. It is, if we're worried about an, uh, an intracranial injury, like a bleed or something that could get a lot worse, then you have two options. You can either get a CAT scan and see if it's there. <laughs> you know, if, if you're clear, you're clear. And mm-hmm. then you can go to sleep. If you're not sure, then we like to keep an eye on people for anywhere from three to eight hours, depending on what you read. Um, and that's where you're just constantly checking on someone. I prefer the former. If I'm truly worried about someone that they've got an, an injury in their head, like a bleed, right. fracture, or whatever, go get a scan, go to the ER, like be assessed. Once you're cleared of that, sleep is great. Sleep is something that's going to yeah, be okay. really beneficial for healing this. And the sooner the better. So the initial phase of healing is rest for anywhere from the first 24 hours to the first couple of days. Um, it used to be that we had a very slow return to, uh, to activity where, you know, you, for 24 hours you would rest. If you had no symptoms, you could get on a trainer, spin really easy for 30 minutes, and that was it for the day. If that didn't mm-hmm. elicit any symptoms, during the training or afterwards, and you could progress to a little harder day, harder and harder. And in seven days, you would have the opportunity to come back to competition. There's that framework is still pretty much in place, but um, for those people who have lingering symptoms early on, there's much more evidence that exercise is probably a good thing. Um, <laughs> that's not intense exercise necessarily. But that's not outdoors where you could be in danger to yourself. The, the exactly. trainers or the group ride or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's in a, it's in a monitored setting. So you would want someone mm-hmm. to help you, uh, dose the exercise, figure out how hard and how long, and there's some mm-hmm. tests you can do, uh, on a trainer to figure that out. And there are physical therapists who specialize in this. I don't mean to say that you've got to get all this expensive treatment. Um, it is nice to have somebody in your corner who can kind of guide you a bit, whether that's your primary care doctor or a knowledgeable physical therapist uh, who can give you some objective feedback as to when it's okay to push and how much. If you're getting advice that you just need to shut it down, shut it down, shut it down for days and days on end, that's probably outdated and uh, not, not the advice you want to be taking. 
there are some scenarios where that's probably appropriate, but in, in, in general, we've moved away from that and much more toward an active recovery, but a closely overseen active recovery. Okay. And, and how do you, like, you said that symptoms uh, that you don't have concussions. So what's, what's like the test to know, like, okay, now is when I, I no longer have symptoms. Um, you can do So there's a lot of tests out there. Some of them are computer-based. And so mm -hmm. if you're a member of a, a, a high school team or a college team, um, you may have access to a computerized test, which is helpful if you've had a baseline test too, to see if you've departed from that. A lot of that is cognitive testing, um, reaction time, things like that. So person, woman, man, camera. <laughs> Wasn't that the, yeah. the, the presidential cognitive test, whatever that was? For most of us, we're not going to have that. Um, you know, I work with organizations that have that and I don't have it on myself. Oh. Uh, so, so for me, and it would be the kind of thing where I would monitor for sleep disturbances, you know, just not being able to sleep, uh, nausea, headache, um, irritability is one, balance issues. So hmm. anything that seems off, there, there's a, a test you can take that's just a sheet of paper, basically, um, that we use with athletes uh, at the roadside and then in the clinic called the SCAT-5, S-C-A-T-5. Hmm. Yeah, and it's just a questionnaire that you can go through. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone who's a lay person to like try to figure out the nuances of um, how to score it, and what's important in terms of interpreting it. But you can mm -hmm. look on there and see a list, a pretty comprehensive list of symptoms that you can scroll through and be like, okay, I don't have any of those. Uh, I'm probably safe to kind of, the, the typical advice is if you, if you fall on a bike and you crack your helmet, you should have a very high suspicion for a concussion. What are the long-term risks or even short midterm risks of, like, I, my understanding is crack, like if you have a concussion and you crash again, uh, that's a super high danger situation. Is that right? It is. There's something called second impact syndrome, which is just that. You've got a concussion and you have another hit. Um, it has resulted in death. You, anytime you've had a concussion, you're more likely to have another one. And the reason for that is you have decreased balance, decreased fine motor skills. Um, you, you're kind of a setup for a while. And that, that can last quite a while, not addressed. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's all sorts of stories of athletes and non-athletes who have had a concussion and six weeks or six months later, they're still struggling with it because their recovery wasn't appropriate. Um, right. And I, I don't want to say that it's always like they did something wrong or someone told them. Some, some concussions take a long time to recover from. Uh, so I, I don't mean to point fingers, but, you know, it's, uh, you do open yourself up to more injuries. And the, the more injuries you have from a concussion standpoint, the more likelihood you have at like a, a CTE or a chronic traumatic right. encephalopathy, which is what you hear about in autopsies of athletes that had oftentimes depression, anxiety, uh, suicidality, things like that. So there, that's there's a really scary very real long-term consequences. Uh, what else should people know? What, uh, what did I miss? What did I not ask about? Um, I think there's some things that are really important that athletes often miss. Um, sleep is a huge one. The, the body repairs everything when you sleep and mm -hmm. a concussion would be a big part of that. So getting adequate sleep, um, adequate amounts and aiming for adequate quality, uh, to the degree you can control it. So all those hygiene things, dark room, cool room. Yep. Um, there's a thing of avoiding know. screens. Is that still a thing? Avoiding screens, uh, avoiding screens is great for your sleep. Uh, it's also good for the concussion, especially in the very early stages, just okay. because anytime you're following a lot of lights and stimuli, uh, it's work in the brain and you want to let it just settle after a good hit. So anything that okay. might cause the brain to work hard, you, you take 24 hours or so off that. Okay. So um, if your friend is concussed and you want to check on them, call them, don't text them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and then nutritionally, I think there's things that can be done that are often overlooked or even kind of uh, just brushed aside by a lot of the medical establishments. It's but, good to eat sweetbreads, right? <laughs> exactly. Sorry, I'm, brain I'm joke. Gonna... <laughs> yeah. French brain joke. Mm -hmm. um, no, uh, omega-3 fat, omega fatty acids, so mm -hmm. fish oil, can be uh, really beneficial. Okay. Um, it's not going to change the entire course of your injury, but you want to have uh, the substrate needed that your body needs to repair. O avoiding really high 
sugar diets, I think, because it's just kind of inflammatory. Uh, you know, anything that is a really healthy diet when you're not injured remains a healthy diet when you are injured. Sure. So vegetables, all those things. And then there's some interesting research around ketones um, hmm. for traumatic brain injury. And a lot of it has come from uh, the military, the U.S. Um. And, the, and the British military. And I think there's enough reason to be optimistic um, and enough of a safety profile to say that it's worthwhile to look into using exogenous ketones for the first few days after an injury. Um, it's far from conclusive, right. but there doesn't seem to be a downside. Uh, Interesting. Other than the cost, they're really expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, in the moment, I and a few of my patients that I work with keep um, a, a bottle of ketones in the car in my first aid kit. And if I'm out mountain biking or something and land on my head, just slam that. Yeah, yeah. I'll start. Okay. I'll start the process and protocol there. Interesting. So that I, I wouldn't say that's medical advice. In fact, I probably have to say none of this is medical advice. Damn it! But. Isn't everything you say medical advice? <laughs> no, nothing, nothing. Okay, all right, all right. Um, I don't know. But in all seriousness, th this is an area where having medical guidance individual to you is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and there may be reasons why some people would not do well with ketones, uh, certain underlying conditions or whatever. Um, and so with all of this, it, it serves to get your own individual advice, but for the purposes of information, and I don't mean that just glibly, like, you know, yeah, yeah. Medical disclaimer. But for the purposes of information, it's worth looking into and talking with your doctor uh, whether something like ketones would be a worthwhile addition. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sprouse. I'm sure that helped a bunch of people <laughs> better than, for sure, better than my advice. Uh, so I'm sure they'll, you would have been right there, for it. right there on it. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was, I was real close. Um, cheers, man. No, thank you. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Good talk yeah, to you. Good to see you.